Rocket Lab just moved flight-ready hardware to the launch pad. Blue Origin is still talking about timelines. One company completed full qualification testing on revolutionary reusable tech, while the other keeps delaying its next big step. Here's what makes this shift crucial. Rocket Lab became America's second most active launch provider without billions in legacy funding or government contracts that competitors rely on. So what did they build that has aerospace analysts calling it a genuine threat to the status quo? Let's dive right in. For years, every conversation about reusability and launch cadence started and ended with SpaceX. That's changing faster than most people realize. While Blue Origin continues refining presentations about what they'll eventually do, Rocket Lab already shipped actual flight hardware to Launch Complex 3. The difference isn't subtle. Here's the context most analysts miss. Rocket Lab operates without the safety net that protects legacy companies. No massive cash reserves from a billionaire founder. No decades-old government contracts guaranteeing revenue. No institutional legacy to fall back on when development hits roadblocks. Yet they've launched more than 70 orbital missions with 16 flights this year alone. That puts them ahead of Blue Origin's entire orbital launch history. How did a company without those advantages build that kind of momentum? The answer starts with Electron, their small satellite launcher. Rocket Lab didn't try to beat SpaceX at their own game. They identified a market SpaceX couldn't efficiently serve. Dedicated small satellite launches with flexible scheduling. Defense contractors, commercial operators, and civil agencies paid premium prices for this service. The revenue funded something more ambitious. While competitors talked about future reusability, Rocket Lab experimented with electron recovery, learning the hard lessons of bringing rockets back from orbit. That experience built the foundation for what came next. Neutron represents everything Rocket Lab learned compressed into a medium-lift rocket designed from day one for rapid reuse. The vehicle targets a $55 million price point, directly challenging Falcon 9 on missions that don't need maximum payload capacity. But here's what makes Neutron genuinely different. They solved one of the most expensive problems in reusable rocketry in a way nobody else considered viable. Traditional fairings get jettisoned during flight. SpaceX recovers theirs with ships and nets, adding operational complexity. Rocket Lab asked a better question. What if the fairing never leaves the rocket? The answer is Hungry Hippo, and recent test results prove it works exactly as designed. The fairing halves open in just 1.5 seconds, deploy the payload, then close again while staying attached to the first stage. That's less than half the time required for standard stage separation. Why does this matter? Every second the fairing stays open exposes internal systems to aerodynamic forces and thermal stress. Cutting that exposure time dramatically reduces risk during the most critical phase of flight. Rocket Lab just released footage showing qualification testing. The fairing underwent repeated opening and closing cycles under simulated flight conditions. Engineers also tested the canards, those fin-like surfaces that guide the first stage during ascent and re-entry. These components handled 120% of their expected mechanical load without failure. That's a safety margin most aerospace engineers would consider aggressive. But the most impressive result came during Max-Q testing, the point where aerodynamic forces peak during ascent. Neutron's carbon composite structure absorbed over 275,000 pounds of force, equivalent to 113 tons distributed across the airframe. The structure held. What separates this from typical aerospace announcements? These aren't projections or simulations. This is flight-ready hardware that passed acceptance testing and now sits at the launch site. Rocket Lab didn't announce plans to test. They completed testing, released the data, and moved hardware to the pad. The difference matters because it reveals how this company operates compared to competitors still refining development timelines. Let's talk about what this design actually accomplishes. 
Every Falcon 9 launch requires recovery operations for both the booster and the fairing. Ships, crews, refurbishment facilities, integration time. Neutron eliminates the entire fairing recovery process. The booster lands with the fairing already attached. No additional recovery mission, no separate refurbishment timeline. This dramatically reduces turnaround time between flights. It's a structural advantage that compounds with every mission. But there's a trade-off most coverage ignores. Neutron's first stage returns with significantly more mass than a traditional booster because the fairing stays attached. That additional weight impacts fuel margins and landing precision. Rocket Lab engineered around this constraint by designing a lighter composite structure and optimizing the Archimedes engine specifically for this flight profile. The result is a vehicle that makes economic sense, even with the added complexity of landing a heavier stage. The second stage proves they're serious about modern propulsion technology. Powered by a single Archimedes engine running on methane and oxygen, it produces 164,000 pounds of thrust at sea level with a specific impulse of 329 seconds. The vacuum variant reaches 200,000 pounds of thrust at 367 seconds of specific impulse. Those numbers place Archimedes in a technical class with Raptor and BE-4, both staged combustion engines. Why does the propellant choice matter? Methane burns cleaner than kerosene, reducing engine wear between flights. It's cheaper than specialized fuels, and it enables the rapid reuse model that makes Neutron economically competitive. Here's the part that should concern Blue Origin and ULA. Rocket Lab already demonstrated they can manufacture, integrate, and launch rockets at scale with Electron. They've proven they can recover boosters and develop engine technology. Now they're applying all that institutional knowledge to a vehicle class where competitors have struggled for years. New Glenn keeps sliding right on the manifest. Vulcan flew twice but remains fundamentally expendable. Neutron arrives in this environment with a proven operational team behind it and a design philosophy focused on practical reuse from day one. Infrastructure tells the same story. Launch Complex 3's water deluge system completed testing with strong, stable performance. Unlike Starship's massive flame trench approach, Neutron integrates deluge pipes directly into the launch mount spraying water downward alongside the exhaust. The system suppresses acoustic energy and manages heat without requiring the enormous ground infrastructure that larger vehicles demand. Static fire testing comes next, followed by the inaugural launch early next year. Each milestone moves Neutron closer to operational status while competitors announce revised schedules. The competitive landscape shifts when you examine what each company actually delivered. Blue Origin flew New Shepard on suborbital tourism flights. Impressive for space tourism, but that's not the market driving launch demand. ULA maintains reliability with Atlas and Vulcan, but neither offers meaningful reusability. SpaceX dominates with Falcon 9's proven performance and Starship's revolutionary scale. Rocket Lab occupies the space between with a vehicle optimized for a specific mission profile. Medium lift payloads requiring rapid, cost-effective access to orbit with full reusability. That niche is larger than most people realize, and it's exactly where launch demand is growing fastest. Does this make Neutron a SpaceX killer? No. Falcon 9's flight heritage, recovery record, and operational cadence remain unmatched. Starship represents a scale advantage no medium lift vehicle can challenge. But Neutron doesn't need to beat SpaceX. It needs to provide a credible alternative that expands customer choice and forces the entire industry toward better performance. That's the role Rocket Lab carved out with Electron, and they're scaling it up with Neutron. The launch industry just entered a new phase, and most people haven't noticed yet. When a company without legacy advantages or billionaire safety nets delivers flight-ready reusable hardware to the pad while competitors revise their timelines again, that's not incremental progress. That's a fundamental shift in who can compete 
at the highest levels of aerospace. Rocket Lab proves something critical. You don't need decades of institutional legacy to challenge the status quo. You need focused engineering, clear vision, and the discipline to execute when others are still planning. Neutron's first flight will test more than a rocket design. It'll test whether a new model of aerospace development can succeed against entrenched players who've dominated this industry for generations. Blue Origin has the resources. ULA has the heritage. But Rocket Lab has momentum. And in aerospace, momentum matters more than almost anything else. They're not promising what they'll build five years from now. They're rolling hardware to the pad right now. The qualification data is real. The test results are verified. The launch is months away, not years. Here's what happens next. Neutron flies, proves the hungry hippo concept works under real flight conditions. And suddenly there's genuine competition in a market SpaceX has dominated alone. That benefits everyone who needs access to space, from satellite operators to defense contractors to future commercial ventures we haven't imagined yet. What do you think? Can Rocket Lab really pressure SpaceX with this approach? Or will operational reality prove harder than their test results suggest? Drop your analysis in the comments. If this breakdown added value, hit that like button and subscribe to Space Update 24 hours so you don't miss what happens when Neutron finally lights up. Share this with anyone tracking the new space race, because what comes next will redefine what's possible.